Hey there, Ride the Car Guy here, and today we are doing a review of the ILX W650 by Alpine. Now before I even get into the interface or any of the technology behind it, I want to talk about how freakishly small this radio is. I think you'll fall in love with this radio as soon as you take it out of the box because it is tiny. And by tiny, I mean shallow. Its total depth without its add-on amplifier, which we'll talk about later, is less than three inches deep. If you've installed radios in the past, then you know how important the depth of a radio can be. Having all of that extra room behind the radio makes installation an absolute breeze. Lining it up next to the radio that I took out of this Mustang, you can see just how much smaller it actually is. Beyond that, the unit itself has a very thin bezel all the way around, so you have a lot of screen real estate in a standard double DIN installation. There's only a few buttons at the bottom here, one to use your microphone, your phone, to get back to the main menu, and then your volume controls on the left. As you can see, this unit is Sirius XM ready, so you can put an adapter in here and get your satellite radio. Let's get started by seeing how long it takes to boot up. Turn the key on. We, of course, get our Alpine splash screen. And okay, now it's up. I'd say that was uh, probably under 10 seconds, even though when you're getting into your car and wanting to drive away, 10 seconds can certainly feel like an eternity. If we take a look at our menu options here, in your main menu, you have a standard array of icons. Of course, you have your radio, you have USB. There's a USB port in the rear. You can run either an extension into your glove box or somewhere else in the car. So that way you can plug things into it. Of course, it will take a USB media key like the icon indicates. Or of course, if you're using the included Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you'd have to plug it in. It's worth noting that this will play high fidelity audio files such as FLAC straight off the USB. Down below you'll see the Bluetooth audio that's pretty much a standard nowadays. You can wirelessly connect your phone for not only music but phone calls using the included microphone. Within your settings here you just have the basic setup. Of course you have your sound, your fade and balance, your bass and treble, and then you can just have preset equalizers if you want to use those, and of course your subwoofer control. If you wanted to you could go to advanced and you could control things such as your crossover, your full band equalizer up to nine different bands, and TCR. Going back, you have your volume set up. You can set up different types of volumes for different things. I actually really like this. We have the mic volume separate from the collar, separate from the ring. Within the system, this is just your standard settings such as your dimmer, your clock, and the different languages you can use different types of connectivity, so basically whether or not you enable CarPlay and how loud the guidance volume is, which is really nice. And here is your Bluetooth settings. These are effectively just a list of your connected phones to manage those devices. And then you can go into your camera settings where this can actually handle a front-facing and a rear-facing camera. Information, of course, is just the standard information on your device, and if you wanted to do a firmware upgrade, you would do that here. Now let's talk about a few things I like and dislike about this particular radio. First of all, I just like the unit itself. I think they did a good job here. They have a very thin bezel around, so it kind of maximizes your screen size. The thin bezel, the capacitive touch, and the, the really small hard buttons just make it look really good in the dash. So take a look here. Overall, it's just a good looking unit. I also love how snappy it is. So moving between menus is fast. There's no lag. I don't have to worry about clicking a button and waiting for the screen to change. Also on the back of this radio, there are three preamps. So you can amplify your front, your rear, and your subs. So in the instance of this car, for example, this already has an amplifier installed. So you just simply use one of your pre-outs. I just use the front. You plug it into the system itself and it uses the factory amplifier. If your car doesn't have a factory amplifier, then it does come with a different power pack that you can purchase additionally called the KTA 450. And that amplifier straps right to the back of this unit. So even with the amplifier, the entire depth of this is still under six inches. I also like what Alpine is doing with gesture based commands. So for instance, let's say we wanted to turn the volume up by one notch. You can just take two fingers and then just swipe up on the screen. Now the volume's up by one. Want it back down, two fingers down, swipe, and the volume is turned down. Same thing goes with advancing tracks when you are playing media off of a media card or at stations, of course, on the radio. This is great so you don't have to take your eyes off the road. And these buttons down here are pretty darn small. So you're not having to hunt for them. You can simply just go like that and you can adjust your volume quickly and easily. 
Now onto a few things that I'm not a huge fan of. First, I wanna start off with the fact that the Bluetooth audio in this doesn't seem amazing for phone calls. So I've done a few test calls and they've all seemed to give me quite a bit of feedback. Now I know obviously that's circumstantial. I'm running an iPhone 11 on Verizon and there's a million different combinations that you could have that may not necessarily have that problem. And the last thing I'm not a huge fan of is of course, like I said earlier, this car does have a factory amplifier, so it's not an issue. However, if you don't have a factory amplifier, this only puts out 14 watts per channel. So really, if you want a lot of volume or a lot of punch to your audio, you're pretty much gonna be forced to buy that miniature amplifier that straps to the back, or your other option would be buy another radio. All in all, I'm definitely impressed with this unit. I think it's uh, got a lot of bang for your buck. It's under $300 and it has excellent sound quality, especially if you have factory amplifiers. It gives you all the amenities you would expect to come in a radio in 2019 and offers an excellent installation experience. I definitely recommend this radio if you're looking for a mid to low price point with a ton of options. So that's it, I hope you've enjoyed this quick review of the ICX W650 by Alpine. If you liked this video, please go ahead and like it, subscribe for more content like this, follow me on Instagram at Rye the Car Guy. And thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.